Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Glenn McGowan. This is Atlas Bowen. Today, I'm going to be finally putting a stereo into the Red 69 Corvette. I have been kind of putting this off for a while. I've had it sitting here in the shop, and it's kind of like one of the last things to kind of button up the interior. Uh, there hasn't been anything in this since its restoration, and I've been kind of driving around with like a Bluetooth speaker and stuff like that because I've mainly just kind of been troubleshooting little things here and there for a while and just making sure everything's solid in it. Um, whenever you're building old cars or restoring old cars, there's always little things here and there and obviously it's not my daily driver so I'm not in it that much but it's at the point now where I can hop in it and drive it around town and I want some decent music in it enough that I can hook my phone up into it and just to kind of enjoy the drive a little bit better as much as I like hearing the big block the side exhaust after a while that kind of gets boring and you want to hear your music so I'll show you what I got today we're gonna to take out the center console install everything and get some music in this thing this week's video is brought to you by atlasbone.com. Shop our site for Corvette performance parts, merchandise, and much more. See the link in the description or visit atlasbone.com. Okay, so I didn't get too crazy here. I essentially got head unit and this like speaker box thing for the back. Now, if this is like your daily driver or something like that, you may want to go all out. I don't want to cut any holes in the car that aren't already there. And I just kind of want to put something back there as far as speakers. Uh, and this box kind of like has a multiple speakers and it kind of made specifically for Stingray Corvette. So it kind of sits back there. Um, this head unit is from 68 to 76. You can get this with Bluetooth, um, auxiliary or just a cable to put your phone into so you know there's a bunch of options there so essentially you know this will look just like the factory head unit the radio and then you can plug your phone in and kind of have that modern appeal which I'm into I do like this you know in that car specifically to look very much like the 69 Corvette that it is and not modernize it too much I kind of like that balance uh, so this is going to be perfect for that. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for these. I believe I got these both from Summit Racing, um, but you can get them, you know, from pretty much any vendor. So we'll look at everything right now. So this is the head unit. So... I'm pretty sure as far as wiring is concerned that you're going to have to splice this in. So sorry, I didn't do research, but I don't know if there's a harness that goes from whatever there from the factory to this harness. Uh, that I don't know. I didn't do any research on that yet. So there's just the harness that comes with it that plugs in the back of this stereo here. And then the wires that are all labeled, it looks like, for, you know, your the constant, your key on, your ground, and then like uh, your antenna wire, all that stuff. The basic, if you ever put a head unit in a car before, that's pretty much covers all that. Um, and here is the head unit. Definitely not as heavy as your original one. So you can see there, looks like the factory one, says Corvette. And then on the back, it's got all your hookups like that. So that's pretty cool. It's the first time I'm looking at it myself. And then there's another bag that has all the knobs and then an auxiliary wire, some sort of metal bracket, which I'm sure it explains it in the instructions. And then obviously the instructions for installation. So that's that as far as the head unit is concerned. Pretty simple, it seems like. We get that out of the way. Okay, now this is the speaker box. Now, that's what it looks like. I've seen these actually installed in the cars before, um, and you could put like the cross flag logo in the center. I don't know if I'll do that. I just essentially want, you know, it's nice to have multiple speakers back in there. I think they're like tweeters and mid range, all that. And it's kind of tucked back far enough where you can't really like see it, which is kind of cool. So I was kind of a fan of that. Oh, here we go. So it does have the 
cross flags on that. So you really won't see it anyway unless you're like looking in back in that shelf there. So that's the centerpiece there. Instructions. And then these are the two speakers essentially here. Pop one out, take a look. So I guess these go on either side and then this thing goes behind it or is a part of it or something. I'm not sure, but we'll get to it. I promise you that. So that's what that looks like there. And it's got red around it. So it kind of matches the car. So it's meant to be. So there's two of those and then there's some sort of rod. So this rod here in the video that I saw, somebody was installing these in a similar car. And I guess this like maybe cut this the length or something like that. So this runs along the back of it, but um, I'll look through the instructions, but this is pretty much it. So, all right, so we got all that and I think I'm probably gonna need extra speaker wire. So if you're doing something like this, maybe get some extra speaker wire, some hardware in the box here. Um, and then you're gonna need some sort of like connector ends. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the radio, whether I'm gonna use like scotch locks into the factory harness. I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually just cut the head of the harness off yet that's in the car, but I don't even know what that looks like yet. So I'll get everything taken apart and then we'll assess what the car side wiring looks like before we start actually wiring it in. Okay, so I got the car moved over here now, so I'm gonna take the T-tops off, uh, mainly get some light in, which really helps. Also, I have a harness bar for my seat harnesses. I gotta unbolt that. Uh, I'm either gonna just leave it in there or pull the whole thing completely out. Also, I'm going to take off like the shifter plate just to clear up some room there. Uh, I'm probably gonna just maybe loosen the gauge uh, cluster area, but once I start taking things apart, I'll figure out the best route because I'm gonna kind of just put it underneath and sneak it up in there, hopefully. So that's the plan at the moment. So it's time to tear into this. Quick peek inside here. This is the bar I was talking about here. It's got my fire extinguisher on there and it mounts right to the factory seat belt locations there. Um, so I'm just gonna take those two bolts out and I'll just pull the whole thing out of the car. Uh, these are attached. The actual parts of the harness are attached to that. So I'll just pull that out because the speaker box is going back there. All right, now I'm gonna remove the shit knob here. It's jumping at me. And then I'm going to take off this plate here. There's just four screws, Phillips head screws. There's that, get the screws in it. Let's see. And I believe this piece here, there's screws up front here and then one down here. Just gonna take these out just to loosen them a little bit. So I have the center console ready to come out. So I just wanna show you where the screws were on this. So there's one down in here. And same on the other side, there's another panel that's supposed to go here. Mine's missing on this side, but the other side there's a little panel. Take that screw out, and then there's a screw here on either side. And I ended up unbolting my uh, armrest here, and there's a bolt that goes through here. I lifted this up essentially to clear this, and then I pulled this backwards like that out of here. Okay, now I got all the wiring exposed underneath here. I have the main harness for the head unit, so it's essentially like wiring up any head unit. You're gonna have your power, which is constant power from the battery, your key on power, 
and then a ground. And there's another one here, if you have a power antenna in your car, where this blue one would go to. Uh, I do not, I will not be using that. That'll just hang out. So I have a test light here, 12 volt test light. So the process here is, I mean, you can take your key on off of the factory head unit, if you want, there's a ground on this bar here. I'll zoom in and show you here in a second. I found a relay that has a constant 12 volts. So I'm gonna tap into those and I'm gonna literally just use what's right here. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not a professional installer of stereos or anything, but this has worked for me in the past, just finding, you know, exactly what you need to tie into. So I'll show you my process here, how I go about finding my, my ground, my 12 volts and my key on. Okay, so I have my ground for my test light on this here. There's actually a little ground here on this relay. So I tested that first by using this here is this yellow wire on this connector is key on. So I essentially just used this ground, turned the key on, checked it and it worked fine. So now I know that this ground is good and then I have a key on here. So using that ground right there, I back probed with the test light just pulled the wire out a little bit and tested it and now with the key off and i found that this orange wire here is constant 12 volts so i'll utilize that for the harness so 12 volt constant key on right here with this yellow connector there and then there's the ground so that's basically all you need to power up the head unit Okay, so I accidentally deleted the video of me showing the hooking up this wiring in here, but I'm just gonna explain what I did. So I used these scotch locks here, love them or hate them, but they work perfectly in this situation, so I don't have to cut up any of the factory harness. So this is my 12 volt constant right there. And then under this one here is my key on. And then what I did was I ran my ground right to that there. I just loosened that up and put it right there. And I ended up taping everything off so nothing's exposed and using zip ties to hook everything together so it's kind of nice clean harness that will run up underneath here like that. So the main part of that is done. This is a good point to hook up your test light again and just check your ground, your positive, and your key on at the connector end before you go any further. So now I'm gonna set up the sound bar here. So it comes in like several pieces. You have like the left and right speaker pieces here. And then you have these two aluminum bars that go in between and then screws and then you have this centerpiece which essentially you're going to put in last week i cut this down to length which we'll get to but first um we're going to kind of just mock this in place we'll take a measurement of the rear shelf area now i'm not sure if that's like a general dimension i mean you're talking 68 to 82 so i don't know how much changes back there so just definitely take that measurement back there um once you have this set up and then tighten it and just trial fit that uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So these covers here on the ends of these speakers, they come already on here like this, and you have to pry those off to access the holes where to put your set screws. So essentially these are on there pretty good. Um, they're kind of loose on the ends here. And then you just have to put a little flathead in on the inside of the little tab. It's actually like held in with, I'll show you in a second. Let's just pry that up. It has some like, I don't know, like sticky stuff on there, which is like help keeping it down there. So just pop those off so you can get your set screw set in there. And essentially all we're doing is just running these rods in here like this. From there. Grab this one. And these are the same like left or right, doesn't matter. They're essentially the same piece. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna put my set screws in here, get the measurement, and then come back, set it, trial fit it, and then once I get that, I'll tighten it down, cut that thing down, all the good stuff like that, but one step at a time. These set screws are tiny, and they give you a little hound wrench there. So if you feel like that's gonna like fall out of there, you can actually take some of that sticky stuff that comes on, these little brackets and just kind of put that in the hole and then your Allen wrench in there like that 
and it won't fall out. So you can kind of place it down in here in this whole little trick of the trade there. So once you get all four of those set in there, you should be good to go. The hole is actually recessed down in there, so using that little bit of that sticky stuff kind of helps. All right, so I got a measurement of like 46 inches back there. So I'm not exactly sure. That was like the top part. And then there's like, you know, part of the body that's curved a little bit, I believe is the wheel wells. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at 46 inches, take it back there, see where I'm at, and then pull it back out and go from there. Um, so I'm getting ready to tighten this thing down. I would use like a straight edge or something because this thing kind of moves around a lot with these rods like that. I mean, there's a ton of play in there. So, you know, put it up against the straight edge and whatever you have that's straight essentially or flat and um, then take your measurement from the bottom side here and then same thing here just to make sure that it's squared up and then just tighten these down yeah let me just double check should do it. Snug these little puppies down. All right, surprisingly that's pretty sturdy. So I'm gonna go hang this in the car right now and go from there. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of a snag here. Uh, I ended up putting it in the car untightened and then stretching it out to get an idea. And this is kind of something you probably only run into if you have like 68 to 72 that has a removable rear window. There's a shelf back there and there's brackets at the bottom and that actually kind of limits you being able to pull this thing out all the way. Now you can like technically remove that. I'm not going to remove that. So this is in, you know, a lot shorter. I think it's like 39 inches. We'll go over in a second and look at that. I did see a video a while ago, a guy had, I think it was a 76. And I remember him having that thing out all the way in the back. So definitely, you know, if you have an early uh, C3, just make sure you check and fit it in there because it's not actually out as far as it should be. Um, there's like a, maybe a five and a quarter inch gap in the center. So there's not going to be like a whole lot of room for this in here where it's, it may actually just get the cross lights or you could just, you know, cut off this piece and use the black if you want. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, let's look at that and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, as you can see in here, I believe it's supposed to go all the way back there. So it's actually stuck in this corner here. And then there's a bracket up there where it's hitting for this rear window shelf there. So essentially I'll show you there back to, you can see the bracket better right there. So that's hitting uh, essentially up against that. So this is pretty much as far out as that can be extended in this car at least and it's up against this back leg here as well. So that looks like it's gonna stay there. So I'm just gonna measure this again. I believe it was like five and a quarter inches. And then I'll cut out my piece, put it in there, put the caps on and finish tightening that down all the way. So I'm getting ready to cut this down. I already have my measurements taken here. So what you can do is whatever that number is, like five and a quarter. So get your center line mark on this. So essentially you can just, you know, measure this whole thing, divide it by two, mark your center with like a piece of tape or something like that. And then at that point, whatever that number is, divide it by two and then go out that much there and this much here. And then there's your number. It's just a quick way to do that. So this is like easy enough. It's like, I don't know, vinyl covered foam. It's got these like inserts here in the back. You pull those out, I'm assuming. And then, because once you pull these out, this will actually clip into those metal rods that are in there. So this cuts super easy with like a utility knife, or box cutter, whatever you want to call it. And just go slow and take your time. That cuts pretty easily. And I think too, like those cover pieces, these here, I think these actually go over this a little bit. So if your cut isn't super clean, I don't think it's the end of the world. But obviously try your best. All 
You may have to take like several deep cuts in here because the foam's thick. So you actually got to cut through all that too. So if this isn't long enough, you could get like one of those reasonably knives that extend out or you could just cut it from one side and cut it from the other. I'm essentially just trying to score this top layer just to get my line straight and then I'm going to go back through and then cut deeper. Just so you're not forcing down and you like miss and cut the silly cross flags off this thing. So I ended up just taking a razor blade like a box cutter blade since it's a little longer. I went around the back of this thing and now I'm just going straight through. One down. All right, there she is. Go pop this in there. All right, so I got that in place. Now I'm just tightening these Allen head bolts all the way down. Okay, now I can put my cover pieces back on. Like that, and now I can work on the wiring. So I'm running the speaker wires. I already had this side ran. I tucked it up here along the wheel well in here and then along this trim here. And I just kind of used this trim removal tool to tuck it up in there instead of using a screwdriver so you don't puncture the wire. And then I ran it behind here and underneath the armrest through here, underneath this piece of the carpet that goes all the way up front here and it runs along this carpet piece in here and then I'll be able to hook it up, up by the harness there and the radio. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I have the harness here, the speaker harness for the radio. So they're all labeled front right, left right, rear left, rear right, all that kind of stuff. So all you have to do for the rear is hook the rear ones into the rear here from your right rear speaker to your right rear connectors on the speaker harness. And they're literally just plug right in, which is kind of nice. You can just use these connectors like that, which they come with. That would do the same thing on the other side. Okay, even though there's multiple speakers in those boxes, you treat them as if it's just one set of speakers since there's only, you know, two wires coming out of each box. So at this point, if you want to run front speakers in your car, you can just use these harnesses and run some speakers, some separate speakers up in the front footrest areas. But for right now, I'm just going to run the rear box. So I'm going to plug this stuff in and see if we got power to it. All right, a little key on. And it works. So now that it works, I'm gonna just plug my phone in real quick just to make sure we get some music coming out of this thing. Okay, so hit the auxiliary button here. Okay, 
So everything works. Uh, I think you can do like settings as far as setting like the rear speakers so all the sound goes back to them. But I'll get to that. Mainly now I'm just gonna start buttoning all this back up. I'm gonna hook it up actually in here now and it's home. So all in all, works pretty good. All right, so I'm getting ready to install this and I was kind of unsure about something. So I've been kind of messing around with this and it's probably pretty important to share. So the way this thing came was like this, right? So underneath here, there's two nuts, a washer, this plastic thing, another washer, and then another nut. So what I found out is, cause there's like nothing in the instructions or online about this at all. So what you're gonna do is you're going to just keep one washer on these, take everything off. So there's two lock nuts down there. The one will be a little loose, tighten that down, put the washer down, install it, then take your other washer. Now this is gonna go on outside of the bezel. So this goes through, this goes in the outside of the bezel. Then you put the washer down and then you put the nut down, right? Tighten it in place. And then at that point, you take these black knobs here and you pop them over like this. So it fills up that empty hole that's in there. So it'll just be flush at this point. And I'll show you when I get it in, but this sits in there flush like that. And then you put this back knob piece right here in like that. And this will stick out essentially like this. And it's got a little groove in here, so it can only kind of pop in one way. It'll stick up like that. And then you could either use this old school knob, which I'm gonna run, or they give you another like little black knob too. And that pops in there like that. So that was the only thing I was like, kind of unsure of and I played around with a couple options, but that's what's gonna work. So I'll put this in right now and then I'll show you the steps just to get it so it sits in there correctly. Okay, so I got the radio in here mocked in place. I ended up taking the screws out of this console piece and just kind of pulling it out. There's plenty of room to get this behind here now. So this is the process. So behind here is just one washer and then the other washer goes in here like this. Then this nut, you run that down. Deep socket, it's like half inch. And don't over tighten it, just snug it because you don't want to strip these threads out. And at that point, you take this and pop that in there like this. Same thing here. And now I'll put this back in start buttoning it up and I'll put the knobs on last. Okay, so I just finished putting everything back together. So I'm gonna just do a real quick look at everything since it's completed. So there it is with the knobs, it looks very original. And then, there's that back there. Okay, so all in all, pretty easy job to do. A couple little hiccups here and there, but that's to be expected whenever you're doing any kind of car project. Uh, but the head unit is pretty cool. The speaker box is pretty cool. I feel like you can pretty much put that in any C3 Corvette and not really have an issue. And the two wire hookups really makes it kind of easy. You don't really have to get crazy. You just have to run those two wires up to the head unit. So if you don't have anything, it's a perfect little setup. You can plug your phone in or hook the Bluetooth up and just be ready to rock. So all in all, I'm happy with everything the way it turned out. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Thanks for watching.